Hello, good buddies, and welcome to my wayward abode. A bird? My wayward abode. <laughs> Where I have finally been given permission by the brain to move forward with the light leak situation. I was going to do the window or the curtain that separates the front and the back. Uh, that's what I was going to tackle today. But just in time, I came across a comment that said, ditch the shower curtain, yo, do um, a pipe strapping, something called pipe strapping, because it's like, it's a metal that you can maneuver and you can like make it conform better to your ceiling. So I am going to put a halt on that project for right now until I can get to the hardware store and try out this pipe strapping because I think that might be perfect. We are instead going to work on these back quarter panel windows. I'm fine with it being permanently covered because I have enough windows and because this back window opens and closes anything that I put in there is being blown around and then it doesn't like stick flush to the window and it messes with my you know stealth ninja secret Heidi spy self so I found at the Walmart for only three dollars this uh, a permanent vinyl. I have no idea if it's gonna work. It might be a complete and total wash, but it was only $3. And what I'm thinking is that it'll stick flush to the window and it'll stay there, you know, even as I open and close the window and it will keep, it'll keep me being stealthy. Super Ninja Spy. Hey, look guys, I, uh, I tore up the wrapping just trying to open it and didn't realize that the instructions were on the other side of it. And so now I have a puzzle to do. Exciting. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Step one. Prepping of the surface. Gotta get rid of these Velcro things first. Oh yeah, got it. I had been foiled by my previous self. One of the things that I tried in order to get something to actually stick to the window as I opened and closed it was to put Velcro on the window and then I was hoping that it would hold the, <laughs> the fabric there. That didn't work and now all I have to try and get the Velcro sticky stuff off is alcohol and I have been at it for the past, I don't know, hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Trying to get all the gooey grag stuff off and it has not worked. So I think I need to get that goo gone stuff. I think I need to go to the dollar store and get the goo gone stuff and accept that past birdie had a bad idea and current birdie has to fix it. That's all right. We actually began the process and that is good enough for me <laughs> for now anyway. If you guys watched my video about going to the RTR, you saw that I made a friend there named Jane and I was like, I'll never see her again, but she's always in my heart. I love her. And I did see her again in the comments. Jane, hello. It's so wild. I don't know how she found my video. I don't know how you found my video, Jane, but that is just super badass. And I am just bowled over by it. It's very, very cute. I'm very, very happy about it. What you thinking about little bluebird? How do you do on this beautiful sunny, sunny day? It's lunchtime. We are gonna try this dollar store wrap snacks icon. We're gonna see if it's any good. I, like you, love uh, van cooking videos to find out how people make their meals. But this is like honestly the extent to what I do. <laughs> I boil water, I warm up soup, especially when I'm in the city. If I'm out in the um, wilderness, the wild blue yonder, I will do more things and maybe it'll be a little bit more interesting as far as cooking at that point. But when I'm in a city and I'm at the park, which is you know usually where I do any cooking, it's honestly just this something that's very, very simple. I really only turned the camera on this time because we're gonna try these um, wrap icon ones and I'm just curious if they're, if they're any good because they're from the dollar store. I wish I could be like Mateo though and his high cuisine in his van he's amazing i am no mateo though let's just get real <laughs> i am a warm up water and throw it on some dried noodles uh lady <laughs> that's who i am spicy chicken we're gonna pour some water in there because i am a chef cuisine or am i the cuisine or am i the chef i guess it depends on who you're asking all right we did it we did it. We got a little bit of water where we shouldn't get, but par for the course, y'all. Par for the course. I totally didn't read the directions because who would do that? Who, who, who would read the directions? I'm assuming we're supposed to, like, let that bitch sit for a while. You would think that I would know ramen noodles by a heart. Like, aren't all ramen noodles the same? And if they think I can read that, they done lost their mind. All right, we're just going to make them like we make every other one and assume that it's going to come out okay. We're just going to let it sit and, uh... What's the word I'm looking for? Softenify. 
Soften the noodles. We need soft noodles. Who you calling a soft noodle? Okay, Boozy. Let's see how your soft noodles are. They look good. They even have corn in it, which is like amazing. So this is from the dollar store, y'all. Pairing it with some Winco sour cream and onion potato chips, which are the best sour cream and onion potato chips, oddly. Winco brand, y'all. I think it's still a little too hot to try. We gonna come back in a minute. Potato chips are hot right now. You guys really set me right about that guy that was oversharing and how I probably should have handled it differently. At the time, I was just so shocked. <laughs> like, dude, you're talking about sucking things out of places that you should not be sucking things, okay? I'm not into it. And I didn't know what to say. And I, I, did, I honestly didn't want to offend him. Now I realize that he was probably using me for some sort of fetishy thing. <laughs> and I probably should have been like, yo, dude, bye, see you later. You know, in a nice way. I didn't need to be a jerk about it, but I probably should have like let him know how inappropriate it was. Mostly because I'm like a worried about if he, you know, obviously he's gonna do that to other gals. And there's probably gonna be gals out there who have sort of like trauma around that and it's gonna really be a problem for them. So I wish I would have handled it differently. There was this other guy I never ended up telling you guys about. It actually happened, I think, in the first couple of months, which is why I didn't do a story time about it. But there was this guy that came up to me in the middle of the night and I thought he was offering me a mercy bang. <laughs> Again, I realize now that's not what that was. But in the moment, you know, in the heat of the moment of things, you don't get it. You don't always get it. At least I don't always get it. It's like nine o'clock at night. I had just gone and done some stuff with my daughter. So I had had to move all the stuff, you know, to the back of the van. So then I'm in the middle of the night. I mean, it's dark. It's late. I guess it's not the middle of the night, but it's late. It's probably like, actually, it is late. Actually, now that I think about it, I think it was late. I think it was like 11. And I'm always a little bit nervous in parking lots anyway after dark. And I'm moving all my stuff from the back you know, back to the front so that I can actually get into the back. And this guy comes up to me and he's, you know, probably in his thirties, a fairly good looking guy. He would have totally been my type, uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago when I was still, you know, a sexual being. But he comes up to me and he's like, you know, how you doing? And he's telling me how he's also homeless and he's heading to a shelter. He's been really nice. And I offered him some groceries because I had just gone grocery shopping. So I gave him some of my groceries. And he's like, he's like not leaving, you know what I mean? Like, you know how like somebody comes up and talks and then usually at some point there's sort of like a natural break in the conversation and you go both your own ways. He wasn't leaving. And he finally asks me, when was the last time you had sex? Um, excuse me, Maurice. His name was Maurice. Woo! -woo. No, okay, song. Anyway, and uh, me having zero filter. It's a problem. I have zero filter. I told him. It's been more than a decade. And so of course he's like, well, why? You're so beautiful, you know, all that stupid bullshit. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just, I'm too freaking crazy. I can't have a relationship. I can't do anything that regard that includes strong emotions. I can't handle it. And again, he's still kind of just hanging around, hanging around. Finally, I'm like, so you're gonna go, you know, head to the shelter. And he's like, well, that depends on you. And I was like, no, it does not. There is nothing that you do that depends on me, I promise. So I'm like, no, sir, it doesn't. I'm sorry, I have to get up early. I'm going to bed. And so finally he left. At first I was like, this dude legit just offered me a mercy bang. He came up and he saw that I'm just like this old pasty lady, <laughs> crickety and crackety. And I ain't had the loving from a strong man in 10 years. It's actually been a lot longer than that for men. I'ma help her out. I'ma give her some of this deep. Some of this fantastic D. I wonder if he was just so shocked that I wasn't like, yeah, I'll give you some of that deep in 10 years. Let me just do it with some strange dude I just met at 11 o'clock in the, in the evening in a Walmart parking lot. That's how you know it was in the first two months because it was in a Walmart parking lot and I haven't, I haven't done one. In fact, I think that was the last time. I think that might've been the last straw for me. Later, I'm telling the story to my daughter and I realized he wasn't trying to give me a mercy bang. He just wanted a warm place to sleep for the night. <laughs> And he was gonna pump one out to get it. <laughs> he was gonna take one for the sleeping team. That's hilarious. Anyway, that's just another example of how I could have handled shit differently. I'm really not made for this world. <laughs> I don't have very good discernment. I automatically assume that everybody is a good person and uh, is not going to do me any sort of harm. I have zero filter. If you ask me a question, the answer's gonna come out. Whether it should or not, that shit's gonna come out. But you, my lovely friends, definitely let me know in the comments. I should have handled that shit different. <laughs> I need to figure out how to get a bit of a backbone. I don't have one of those. 
Can you buy them at Ross? Like on discount? Anyway, I am gonna work on it. I'm also ready to try Boozy's uh, soft noodle. Come on, Boozy. <laughs> I almost said give it to me, but you know, he's probably got a wife, so I'm being stupid. Hard for the course, y'all. Hmm. Oh man. Hmm. Oh man. I mean, it's not bad. It has kind of a weird, like, old water flavor, which is weird because I used brand new water. But you know what I mean, like old water. <laughs> Let me get a piece of the corn, see if that pleases my tongue anymore. I mean, the corn's good. How can you screw up corn though? I mean, it's not bad. It's just like a little bland. It's like it's the spice, but not a lot of flavor. And it has like an old water taste to it, which is very strange. I don't understand how that happens. It's edible. I'm gonna get my dollar twenty-five worth out of it. But I don't think I'm gonna buy it again, Boozy. I'm so sorry. I guess it's hard to be a good rapper and a good um, noodle maker. Of course, I know he didn't actually make these noodles, but let the joke stand. All right? Is it a joke though? I don't know. Was it funny? Doesn't it have to be funny to be a joke? I don't know. Ask that rife dude. Probably not. It probably doesn't have to be funny to be a joke. Uh, in the world of comedians, edible. That's my rating. The potato chips are better. Anyway, lesson learned, both about edible noodles and strange men coming up to me in parking lots. I need to learn how to, with a loving, non-harmful way, tell these people, neither do I want a mercy bang, nor am I willing to accept a bang in payment for a bed to sleep in, nor do I want to hear the orifices you explore in your free time. They say it's, it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks, but I feel like I've proven that a little bit wrong in the last few months, so I'll get better at it, you guys. Thank you for having my back. Nosy Hasfrau just shared a quote in the comments that said, the cave you fear to enter has the treasure you seek. And I think that is so cool, because I actually call my van the cave. Because when I get all inside and I close it all up, it feels like this cozy little cave in there. So I love the fact that the cave I feared to enter, living in the van, which is my little cave now, gave me the treasure that I needed so bad, which is you guys. So that's like the most perfect quote. I almost want to like paint it on the side of my van. Thank you, Nosy Housefrau. That was amazing. And I hope I'm saying your name right. Love you. The most amazing breeze keeps coming through the van. It's that sweet spring breeze, you know, that's cool and fresh, but not cold. It looks like I'm having a romantic picnic with myself. All I need is a blanket and some broken expectations and the scene would be set. I just woke up. <laughs> I just woke up, I'm making my coffee, and I'm going through comments because I read all the comments. I read every single comment. It takes me a minute to get around to replying to everybody because, you know, I'm slow, but... <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. I just saw a comment where somebody told me to get over myself and act normal. <laughs> they want me to act normal. She just gave me a huge laugh this morning. We're sending her nothing but love and light. <laughs> you guys, we might have a bit of a miracle on our hands. Has a Seraphel been here? Y'all look. That's the power station that died. It's now at 25%. How did that happen? It was dead for weeks while I'm going back and forth and back and forth with the insurance company. And finally they're like, okay, we'll cover it. And I'm going to box it up and I thought, let me just try it one more time. I had been checking it like regularly to see if it would come back to life. Maybe it just needed to dry out. I don't know. I had been checking it really regularly, but I'm like, let me just check it one more time before I tape this box up and send it away. Cause boy howdy, it would be nice if it would just work. And it did. What? I am so confused and so excited and 
I'm really, really, really hoping that it actually sticks. I'm charging it now. I'm gonna see if it actually holds the charge before I fully accept that, you know, there has been a miracle in my life. But either way, like, wild. Wildness has happened and uh, gratefulness has followed on its uh, heels. I just gave my toe a haircut. <laughs> Aging is a hell of a thing, ain't it guys? So dollar store Gugon does indeed work better than alcohol on go. Um, imagine that. Uh, using something for its intended purpose is actually better than using something not intended for that purpose. Sometimes. This is a good thing to know. I'm 50, I'm just learning it. How about you? The time change is so weird. I think I feel it like even more in the van because usually by now it's six o'clock, y'all. Do you see how bright it is? Usually by now I'd be like, tucked into some parking lot somewhere with all my shades up and because it's dark outside and it's time to just be inside now, right? Time change just has me not knowing what to do with myself at six o'clock. Isn't it bedtime? What? A few people have asked me why in that video I did about the things you might not like about me, I came out right off the bat and said that I'm bi and they were like, uh, you know, I would never tell anybody straight off the bat that I'm straight. I don't understand why anybody needs to tell anybody that they're gay right off the bat. And um, for me, it's because I have had entirely too many experiences in my life where like I become friends with somebody, I really like them, and then they find out that I'm gay or bi and they don't like me and it has broken my heart <laughs> more than once. So I just don't, you know, I've just gotten into the habit where I just tell people pretty much, you know, pretty close to the beginning of a friendship, just, you know, to avoid that from happening. And anyway, I just thought this was like a perfect example of a comment to show why I wanted to let people know right off the bat. Because, <laughs> you know, I ain't trying to hide anything from anybody. And it's better, I guess, if people know now. So if you're curious why it is that I feel like it's important to put it out there early on in a friendship, this is a good example why. You gotta admit, that would be a very interesting round table. This license plate is giving me flashbacks to that guy that shared too much information with me. So I'm going to take off for the week. I am trying to do vlogs every Thursday. So hopefully I can actually pull that off. And I am going to start the Sunday streams. I don't think this Sunday. I think I'm going to start the a week from Sunday. Because I need to work out like the logistics of it. I can't just use my phone for it all. Which is what I usually do. But I'm not going to be able to read the comments. And also have like the camera up and stuff. Otherwise I'll, like, I'll be like trying to read the comments. And I'll be up. You'll be like just looking up my nose the whole time. <laughs> I don't think that'll be any fun. So I need to figure out a way to use my computer and my phone in order to make the stream work, which means I have to figure out power. So I just need to give myself a, a week or so to figure that out. But I am going to start the streams on Sunday. The votes look like it is going to be Sunday for sure. And then it'll probably be like either 1.30 or 2 p.m. And it will be only an hour long stream. Sister Rev reminded me that I need to not push myself past my own comfort level. And while I do really look forward to talking to everybody, I really have a very small social battery and I am super in, in love with talking to folks for about an hour. <laughs> and then after that, it's like, I just, you know, it's like cheesecake is amazing, right? We freaking love, I mean, people that love cheesecake, right? Whatever your favorite cho choice of cake is, it's amazing, right? But if you end up with too big of a piece, at some point you're going to get to a bite that like, you know, it'll still taste good, but it just isn't really going to feel good in your mouth or your belly. You don't really want to take that bite. And it's not because the cheesecake isn't amazing because freaking cheesecake. I mean, especially New York cheesecake. Oh my God. But you know, you get my point. So they're going to just be hour long streams. And then, um, I am hoping to actually do some sort of random videos like reviews, maybe story times or outings, you know, going to a museum or something fun or cute or whatever. So that's the plan I have so far for the channel. I have been pretty good about getting a vlog out every Thursday, which I'm sorry, a little bit of a pat on the back for me because I'm not usually very reliable, but this is actually it's something that I'm able to do, luckily, because I can just do it whenever, you know what I mean? And when I have my bad days, y'all aren't going to fire me. <laughs> and that is freaking cool. So anyways, so 
that is the plan, Stan. And I guess that means since it's Wednesday, I need to get off of this camera and go do some editing so I can get the vlog out tomorrow. Okay, my friends, thank you so much for being here with me. I can't wait to see you again. And um, I guess that's all I have to say about that. So I love you. Bye.